Hello, the Network Bank here. Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll be going over ARP and the different type of modes that you get on Microtik and just generally how it works. So let's jump into the video. So what's ARP? ARP is a protocol that effectively runs on, I think, layer two. Um, but what ARP is doing is it's a broadcast that gets sent out to the network in order to try and learn which IP address belongs to which MAC address. So in an earlier lecture, we talked about DNS, where a host name was resolving to an IP. Think of this as the same thing. So when devices work on frames or at the switching layer, they communicate use, using MAC addresses. So it's it, the switch is going to kind of need to know which MAC address to forward frames to, and it can achieve that by doing ARP. So it can store all of those MAC address entries in a table to say this port belongs to this MAC address. And whenever you see this IP address, just send it to uh, that port. So we're going to quickly look at ARP in its fullness uh, by just jumping onto this router in our EVE NG topology. And on the router, what I'd like to do is just navigate to IP and then ARP. This is where you can see all of the ARP entries that are currently configured on the router. Um, what I can do is on the router, currently it doesn't have any ARP entries because we haven't actually tried to get to anything yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a ping on this router one and I'm going to ping IP addresses that I know that have been assigned to a DHCP client, which was uh, 100 and .99. And if you look at my ARP list, it's actually populated that information in this ARP table to tell me which IP address belongs to which MAC address and which interface it's associated with. If I double click on an ARP entry, I can see a bit more of what's happening. It's also nice with the ARP entries from here, you can do MAC pings. And if the device is another router board, you can do something like a MAC telnet to connect to the device and uh, see if everything's working like such. But here's the cool bit. You can do stuff like make an ARP entry static. And if you do that, it means this MAC address will always belong to this IP address on that interface. It cannot change. If, if another IP address uh, tries to use this MAC address, it, it just, the, the router will ignore it. All right. I'm just going to remove this um, static so that it can be dynamically learned. And then I want us to look at the different type of ARP modes. So ARP modes, you're actually going to look at from an interface perspective. If you go into the interface menu, uh, so let me go into this bridge. And if I scroll down, you get that ARP is enabled. So ARP is just a protocol. Uh, if you leave it enabled, it works like on any normal network. Most networks just have ARP enabled that broadcast traffic. It will learn the IPs and associated to MAC addresses, but you can disable it which means as soon as this is disabled, I will not automatically learn any ARP entries. So <laughs> there's, there's no way for me to learn ARP entries. It, it's just, I'll have to statically put all of the ARPs in myself if I want to, to work. Uh, then you get stuff like reply only. So reply only means I will not fill in an ARP entry in my ARP table. So I'll still have to put it in statically, but the remote side will at least get my ARP details. So with disabled, nobody gets any ARP entries. So if let's say the router's address is this 192.168.10.1, or let's go to the topology. It might be easier to understand from there. So 192.168.10.1 uh, is router, and PC1 tries to ping the router's address. So it's sending out that broadcast to ask, hey, who is this? And if you have it disabled, the router is just going to ignore it flat out. Even if it knows uh, what the ARP is, it's not going to send anything back to the PC1, so it will never learn any ARP entry for that address. So that's what happens if we set it to disabled, but luckily if we set it to um, reply only, the remote side will at least get the ARP, but we still need to fill in the ARP ourselves. Then you get stuff like proxy ARPs, which uh, effectively just means your ARP is being learned from a remote entry somewhere. So not, not something you see typically. What you'll generally see is that the ARP is just enabled by default, unless it is being disabled due to some type of security practice. This is what you can do with the ARP modes. There is more in-depth details regarding the ARP modes uh, on the wiki. So I'll link that article in a reply as well. 
uh, just for you to go through. I've also got some slides and reading material about it, but yeah, that covers it. This is ARP. Um, that's how ARP works on the MicroTik, and this is the different ARP modes that you can set on your interfaces. This is per interface as well, so it's not something that you do on a global level. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.